Um, I'd like to thank you all for joining us. Very welcome here with this webinar. Uh, that we'll be looking at optimizing condition-based maintenance and looking at a practical example of uh, how to do that using our Onkey software, getting that implemented and automated so that you um, have a smooth running maintenance management program using condition-based maintenance. Um, the hosts for today is myself, Stefan Swanepoel. I'm head of product development in Prachma. So the Onkey product suite uh, sits with me and then uh, Darren White will be doing most of the talking today. He's our product owner for our Onkey Connect platform, but also very knowledgeable on the on condition-based maintenance uh, you know, from his past experience in our MarTech business where he was involved with condition monitoring work. And he'll be hosting us and taking us through how the different parts of Onkey works together to make uh, condition-based maintenance possible in the solution. Maybe just before we get started, and for everybody's information, Darren will take us through more detail, but the intent is to just briefly in the session go over uh, the basics of maintenance tactics and where condition-based maintenance fits into that picture. But then we will be jumping into uh, Onkey itself to show exactly um, how you would set up Onkey to automate your maintenance, uh, you know, condition-based maintenance. And I think the message that we want to bring across is that um, the solution is well set up to take uh, various types of condition monitoring readings into the system, process it, uh, create work orders with the right tasks on it, um, and make sure that that work automatically flows to the right people to do the work with the right space and everything attached to it so that you can um, automate as much as possible of your maintenance tactic, not, use, not needing uh, a lot of human intervention in the process. Maybe just as a reminder to everybody before I hand over to Darren, um, if there's any questions that comes up during the um, during the talk, please um, you know put those for us in the Q and A section. We'll keep an eye on that, um, and then uh, try and answer it there. Or um, you know, if we see at the end of the session uh, there's need for some discussion around some of these topics, we'll we'll deal with it then. So I think on that I know, Darren, uh, thanks a lot for joining us and over to you then to take us through the more details. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. And to welcome everybody to this webinar. I'm very excited to demonstrate a use case where we can optimize condition-based maintenance and using Onki. I hope you find this valuable and I hope uh, today what you get out of this is something that you can um, use in your environment. Yeah, so let's jump in. Okay, so like Stefan said, is I'd like to set the scene first, you know, talk about condition-based maintenance. What is it? Where does it fit in? Um, this is not a theory about condition uh, monitoring. Uh, it's merely just to um, introduce uh, the concept. Okay, then I'm going to talk about um, the use case and what I'm using over here. So um, I'm putting on my engineering manager hat. I've already done my criticality analysis. I've identified a generator to be on my criticality A list. And um, yeah, so I'm going to perform a failure mode and effects analysis um, on the generator, or only on two components, rather. Then I'm going to talk about the condition monitoring technology that we're using for this use case. And then the edge to cloud. And uh, the measures that I want to take over here as well, you know, in terms of this use case is. I'm the engineering manager, and at this moment, I've got a condition monitoring system or solution in place, but it's detached from my maintenance system, and I've got lots of alarms piling up. So what do I do? How do I integrate this into my maintenance processes? Okay, then I'd like to just touch on the Onkey product suite. How does this fit in, and you know, what's the rest of the um, components within this um, architecture or landscape? And then lastly, I'm going to start with the demo. And um, so how do I automate this condition-based maintenance tactic using Onkey? And then the components over here is, um, so I've got two examples, what I want to show. So the first example is I've got a manual measurement that I need to capture within Onkey on a monthly basis. But then I also have an automatic or a continuous online monitoring solution using IoT, where I collect data from sensors in the field. 
I push it to an IoT platform, and then from there, I use the capability of the technology to export this data into Onki to drive your condition-based maintenance uh, tactic. I will show you in Onki how Onki Plus supports failure modes and effects analysis. And then lastly, how do I set up this automatic process for collecting the data? You set up your thresholds or your expressions, and I'll touch on that just now. How does it pull the tasks um, so that it can be added to the work order? And in other words, the technician um, mustn't think too much about um, this task. Him or she must know exactly what to do with the detail that was automatically created within this work order. Okay, so what is condition-based maintenance? So this is a philosophy where the condition of the equipment is monitored to detect any um, you know, impeding problems, and then you can predict when maintenance should be performed uh, to prevent breakdown. And how, we, how do we address these failures? Well, you've got a couple of options when it comes to your maintenance tactics. So first of all, got your run to failure um, maintenance tactics. So this is where you inspect for a failure you know, on a specific interval. You've got your usage-based maintenance. So this is where you repair or replace irrespectively against a you know, fixed interval or usage of your assets. And I'll use running hours here as an example. And then your condition-based maintenance. So here you inspect the condition and only intervene if the condition is not within thresholds. Okay, and this can be a very effective strategy to address failures, and I'll, I'll touch on that uh, just now. Okay, I talked about the um, FMIA or failure mode and effects analysis, and this is merely just a spectrum of your, um, an example of this. And this is a technique uh, used to identify your potential failures in your systems and your equipment. And um, it's all. so once you've identified the failure modes, you can determine the effects and you can prioritize them based on how critical they are. And if I can use an example over here uh, of a rotating machine, you've got a motor, uh, two failure modes are presented over here. Um, what is not included in this table is the failure mechanism. And this is something that Onki Plus also supports. On top of this, you've got your failure uh, cause, and then this failure cause needs to be addressed, you know, uh, where you set up your task. And here you need to identify what the uh, detection and method or technique is, um, what you want to use. And there's examples of how you can pick up this failure mode. So an example here is vibration analysis or, or spectrographic and uh, paragraphic analysis. Okay, so, when is condition monitoring um, feasible? And, you know, um, first of all, yeah, the monitoring technology allows you to detect a potential failure earlier in time so that you have enough time to react. And when is it practical? So it's only practical if the intervals are smaller than the PF interval and the warning period is long enough um, to allow intervention. And it's also only feasible when the cost for, the, for your condition-based maintenance tactic for a specific component is lower than the total cost of your consequences of failure over a specific uh, period. And note that you know, in some cases, condition-based maintenance um, is not suitable because you won't be able to catch it early enough. You know, in this case, you can make use of advanced condition monitoring. And how do you determine this measurement interval if you want to continuously um, measure a specific condition um, of your equipment? So this measurement interval must be smaller than the uh, PF interval, plus some intervention time, and plus a safety factor. Okay, so just an example of, um, you know, the, the, the PF intervals and the condition monitoring techniques that you can use to to capture this uh, potential failure early in time. And you know, one example over here is partial discharge in the electrical condition um, assessment or monitoring space. Uh, ultrasonic is next, and then vibration analysis. And yeah, I just like to add that yeah, the Onki supports all of these different techniques, and you can choose any method based on how you want to automate your maintenance strategy for your assets. And for example, if I can use, let's say the oil analysis, 
So you know what your contamination um, elements or chemicals are, and you can set up thresholds. Um, and then these thresholds will automatically trigger alarms and ultimately uh, work orders. And then it's out of the hands of your technician. Uh, the work order will tell the uh, technician exactly um, what to do. And uh, so this PF interval um, is dependent on the technique that we employ, um, as I just stated now. And so human sensors techniques are seemingly very cheap and simple, but the monitoring frequency has to be very high. And you know, like I mentioned previously, this is possible. Um, and in some cases, it might be a better option uh, to use human sensors, you know, like touch, um, listen, um, or hear. Um, and they can be effective uh, depending on the specific application. And if we employ a method like a vibration analysis, uh, this inspection frequency can be a lot less uh, because it's you can detect it uh, a lot earlier in time compared to your other methods. Just examples of condition monitoring technology. We've got vibration analysis, we've got infrared thermography, and these two technologies are the technologies that I'm using for this use case. And we've got insulating or lubricating oil analysis. Uh, I touched on that just now. Uh, ultrasound technology, as well as partial discharge analysis by looking at uh, insulation um, deterioration on cables and other insulating material. Okay, so the use case, as I said, this is a critical asset for me. I've got a one MVA generator. And for this example, I've identified two components that I want to look at. I've done my homework. I've done the FMIA uh, for these specific ones. So the first component is um, a cooling system bearing on the, in the engine itself. So here, I need to identify what the failure mechanism is. So in this case, it's shock loads unbalanced or heat. The failure mode, uh, this is fails to allow rotor to turn smoothly. The failure cause, um, in this case is extended use of machine shock loads on bearings or unbalanced. And once I've identified this failure mode mechanism and cause, I can then define what the task should be to address this failure and to pick up this cause. And the task over here is that I want to continuously measure vibration um, readings. And the threshold that I've set up over here is five millimeters per second, specifically for these uh, bearings. And if I can just use an example here of technology that you can use, this is a spectrum analysis that you can do on vibration data. And then the second component, this is the, um, is, it's the alternator and specifically the drive belt. So here, the failure core, sorry, the failure mechanism um, rather is that the belt is worn or stretched or failed. The mode is it fails to transmit drive to the alternator. And then the cause is so this could be due to usage, excessive heat, insufficient tension, high vibration, um, and noise. Okay, and then the condition monitoring technology that's um, or task that I identified is that I want to perform um, thermography, um, you know, scanning of this alternator belt and on a monthly basis. And if this temperature or surface temperature exceeds a value of 60 degrees Celsius, and then I can do something about it. But this is... Um, yeah, the condition over here is that the ambient temperature should be below 40 degrees Celsius if you want to set your threshold at 60 degrees C. And I'll quickly talk about it a bit later. And, uh, you know, where Onkey Plus does support this complex conditional uh, thresholds that you can set up. It's, it's the, the terminology that we're using over here is um, expressions or the features name. And I'll quickly show you a demo. This is just an example. Uh, of a thermography image of a, of a drive belt. Okay, so uh, just to set the scene, what am I gonna do over here in my demo? So first of all, you know, the first one is I want to manually capture a thermography, um, you know, or the results of the thermography uh, scan, and I will manually enter this temperature reading in Anki 
and it will automatically trigger a follow-up task if the temperature exceeds 60 degrees Celsius. And then the artisan or the technician will have all of the detail uh, that he or she requires uh, to perform the, the work. Okay, and then the second one is where I use uh, IoT technology and I automatically collect this data from the edge. I push it to the IoT platform where I can visualize it. And then from there, I um, integrate this data into Anki and I push it automatically. Um, yeah, so those are the two examples that I will be uh, tackling. Okay, the second example that I talked about where I collect the data from the edge and push it to Anki. This is just an architecture that I want to show before I go into the demo. So I've got a generator, I've got a generator controller, and this controller already reads data from existing sensors on the generator itself. I've got an IoT gateway that is interfaced to my controller. And I'd like to add that these IoT gateways also allows you to add additional sensors um, as it's got multiple options when it comes to interfaces and you can collect your vibration readings because typically your generator controller doesn't collect um, such vibration data. Okay, and then next this data is pushed to the cloud and this is our product that we call Anki Connects and that's how we enable um, our assets to be connected to the cloud. We've um, and this Anki Connect it gives you a device management capability. It enables you to visualize your data in real time, um, and it also allows you to integrate and export this data to what um, yeah, other third-party system you might have. And then ultimately, what you want to do is you know you don't only want to just monitor your data and have this platform create lots of alarms. Um, you want this data or the alarms or the events to be actions, but actions with the correct detail of what to do, the correct resources, and also the correct space. Um, and what I want to add over here is that Anki Plus is developed as an API first approach, uh, and it makes use of the REST um, API to seamlessly export data and integrate data um, into Anki. Okay, so what Un uh, Anki Plus has is an intelligent asset register. And what this asset or intelligent asset uh, register does is that you, uh, we, we've got this concept called an asset type. Um, and ultimately it's a, it's a template that you can define on a parent level and you make all changes and you can instantiate or create instances of this asset type, and you can have thousands of the same um, asset type. And, um, and as you can imagine, on scale, it will be quite difficult to make a specific change on all of these thousand uh, generators. So you rather make this change on asset type level, and you roll out these changes to all of the, the assets that are connected to this um, asset type. Okay, and then for this example, you know, you've got an asset, you've got a component uh, linked to that um, asset. You perform FMIA on the component and you um, then create a task to address that specific uh, failure mode. And then you capture the reading for your condition-based maintenance tactic. And, you know, the, the monitoring points are entities um, that store analog type of data used to trigger alarms um, and any action. And how do we trigger alarms? Uh, well, we make use of something called expressions. And uh, these can be predefined for the data capture to trigger alarms and then automatically creates a, a work order. And uh, this is, uh, expression is linked to a follow-up task, uh, which you already set up during your maintenance plan development when you performed the FMIA. And then this detail is then captured in the work order. Um, and as I said, it, you can uh, once this expression evaluates as true, depending on whatever expression um, you developed, it will create an alarm, and then you can decide whether it wants to create a work order automatically um, um, or not. Okay, and um, yeah, I said previously, I'll just quickly 
um, you know, just talk about an example of an expression. So this expression can be very basic. You can tell it if this monitoring point reading exceeds a value of 60 degrees Celsius, then do something. But Onkey Plus makes this functionality or capability very flexible in the sense that you can now combine multiple monitoring points and not just monitoring points. You can, you can combine any other entities within your Onkey environment. So if you'd like to do something or read a state of a work order, um, as well as read a measure from a, um, you know, from a sensor and then do something, Onkey allows you uh, to do that. And these expressions can be uh, quite complex in nature. Okay, so the, the Onkey product suite, um, yeah, I think it's important, you know, just to show what our, our Onkey suite looks like and how everything fits in together. So we've got our core system, and this gives you your intelligent asset register, your work management uh, module, inventory management, etc. You can then extend the core functionality of your Onkey um, EIN product. Um, and this is a platform, action RAD platform that we're using, and we've developed standard applications that works um, seamlessly with um, Onkey Plus. And uh, these apps, uh, you know, this is mobile or web applications. Um, this is the work portal app where contractors can upload um, invoices on specific work that they performed, the field engineering app, the service request app, or the client portal app. You can then gain insight from all of this data that you're collecting within your system of records or your EAM um, system. And we've created standard analytical models. Uh, so to name a few, the work management insights, you can look at your financials, and then as well as your asset reliability and health um, insights. You can then make this data available to your people, and these people can include your end clients, decision makers, planners, supervisors, etc. And what we're covering over here in this uh, demo is the Onkey Connect platform as well. And this is where you connect up your assets, like I explained previously, and it allows you to manage your devices. Uh, you can do processing on the edge um, as well as in the cloud. So if you want to transform any data, you can visualize your data in real time, and then you can push this data to any other system using uh, the integration capability um, of the system. Okay, if you want to make this data available to any other system um, you know, that you use, um, you can use this using the, or you can do this using the Integrate uh, platform. Uh, so this includes enterprise applications or IT systems, and to name a few examples, Dynamics 365, Acumatica, uh, and in fact, you can also uh, push data to SAP. Okay, so let's move on to the um, live demo. Okay, so this is a live demo of a IoT solution that we um, currently have installed at our own building. And this is data that we're collecting from the generator controller, like I showed in the example uh, previously. So it collects all data such as your mains voltage, status of your generator, fuel level, um, et cetera. You can look at you know, operational type of statuses of the generator, which is quite important, you know, such as if this controller is in auto mode, because if it's not, the generator will not start um, automatically uh, during these load shedding conditions in South Africa. Um, uh, you know, the same scenario, if your emergency stop button is activated, it will also not start um, automatically. And then you've got numeric view to look at uh, further detail um, of your asset, or, and then you can have trends. Okay, but what I want to show is how do you now make this data available within Onkey? So this IoT platform uses uh, webhooks that enables this functionality for you. And you can specify what telemetry should be pushed to Onkey. And then you have to um, yeah, just add the detail of your body of your um, webhook um, request that you make to push this data to your third party system. Okay, so let's just move on to the next part of this 
demo. Okay, now before I move into Onki Plus and demonstrate the functionality in there, I'd like to just first visually show this whole process because there are quite a few components within this demo. Um, and you can get um, yeah, a bit lost when <laughs> you jump between all of them, but I'd just like to show you the concept. Okay, so uh, when we do our FMIA, um, you've got your components. And in this example, I'm using the drive in bearing. Uh, what is the function of, of this specific component? So this is to provide low friction rotation. The failure mode that I'm looking at is, uh, you know, the bearing can seize. And the mechanism, which is um, the evidence of this um, uh, bearing seizing is um, crackling, cracking. And then the, fa the failure cause, you know, there's uh, two possible causes. This is uh, probably due to lack of uh, lubrication or it's misaligned. And then is this failure um, evident? Um, and then I get input from the failure mode mechanism and the cause. So yeah, in this case, yes, it is evident. And then you have to ask yourself the next question is, uh, uh, what is the PF interval? Is it greater than the response uh, time plus a safety factor? If it is, and then you identify a measurement or your de detection um, technology to detect this failure mode. And in this example, it's vibration. And this is what we're going to use for this uh, demonstration as well. And then what's the primary task? So in this case, the primary task is to measure the vibration continuously using the technology. And then you set up a follow-up task should this reading exceed a specific threshold and then trigger a work order automatically and include this um, follow-up task. Now, this is the example of the online condition monitoring, but then the other example is you can set up a monthly um, task to perform um, thermography imaging, and then you have to then insert that monitoring point reading manually. And then if that monitoring point value then exceeds your threshold, it will automatically kick off a work order. Okay, so um, it takes in the inputs yeah, from the failure um, cause. And then, like I said, the follow-up task, um, you know, if this measurement uh, exceeds a threshold, the follow-up task would either be lubricate, replace, or perform laser alignments on your bearing. And um, what I'd just like to add over here is that uh, Onki doesn't just allow you to capture a condition measurement, but also integrates this measurement into your predefined maintenance plan developed from the FMI exercise. And Onki is one of few systems that allow you to specify the failure, the cause, and the task to address this failure. A follow-up task can then be set up to define what needs to happen if a measurement exceeds a threshold. Okay, so that sets the scene. Let me take you to Onki. Okay, I'm gonna, this is a step uh, process. And what I want to show you first is just the end state of we've got a, a condition based maintenance tactic. How do we set this up? And then how is a work order created? Let's start with the asset type tree. Like I said, is first, um, you add the detail and your maintenance plan on asset type level, and then roll this uh, these changes out to all of your, your instances of this asset type. So in, in this example, we've got the generator and I've created a demo generator. Like I said, the two components that I'm targeting um, for today are the alternator belts. And then in the engine, the cooling system and the cooling fan bearing. So what I did over here is I've performed an FMIA and as a result of the FMIA, I've created two tasks. First of all, the primary task. So in other words, monthly perform a thermography. If this measurement um, you know, triggers an alarm, it will automatically trigger your follow-up task and this is to retention or replace uh, your belt. And I'll show you that just now. And then the other one, same scenario. My primary task is I have to continuously do vibration monitoring. 
if it exceeds a threshold, trigger this, uh, trigger a work order that includes um, the task where uh, these deviations have to be reported and actioned for replacement, or overhauling, um, or repair. Okay, I've defined this, and uh, let me just show you here at the top level. Now, what I also need to do is I need to now define or specify what the expressions are that will trigger these alarms. And on asset type level, I have to create a monitoring point trigger. So if I can use an analogy of a container, so this is just a container to hold all of your expressions. And I'll show you the, uh, that example, the detail uh, just now. Okay, but the second step is I've created the asset type. Next, I want to now create the asset in my asset tree. And I've created this on a demo client and I've called this ge uh, generator, the webinar uh, demo generator. All of the changes and all of the man maintenance plan detail that I've captured within this asset type will be rolled out to this instance. And I'm not gonna show it now, but um, everything I showed you over there is just repeated um, over here. And the nice thing about this is that if you make any changes on your asset type level, there will be icons that change this color over here to um, indicate to you, hey, there's a change. Would you like to synchronize this change? Um, yeah, and decide uh, whether that is um, applicable for this um, instance. Okay, now, like I said, you have to link a monitoring point trigger, let's call it container on this asset. And this container includes all of the expressions. So these expressions are the expressions that will trigger alarms and then automatically create work orders. I've created two over here for this example, but you can have many and you can have quite complex expressions as well. So for this example, the manual monthly manual uh, measurement that we're taking, the temperature, as you can see, it's it's a, a expression that you um, define, and because you define it in this uh, manner, it can be quite complex um, if you want. So I've got a monitoring point um, that I call monitoring point temperature, and then I've got a bound that I set up, and I call this parameter a bound up. So all of these parameters that you see over there with the add symbol in front, um, they are parameters. And within these parameters, you have to go uh, change the details. So you have to go say, what is the type? So in this case, it's a temperature type of monitoring point. And then the same with the other parameter, like I said, the, the upper bound limit. Here, I say that it shouldn't exceed 60, uh, 60 degrees uh, Celsius. Okay, so this is my monitoring um, points trigger. And uh, for this specific expression, so the temperature, if this expression evaluates as true and the alarm is raised, I can also say that it must trigger an alarm type. So if I can use another analogy for this, this is the action. What must I do if an alarm is raised over here? And for this alarm type, I said that please uh, automatically create a work order. Okay. Let's move on to the monitoring point. So I'd just like to add that this monitoring point trigger container was defined on your asset type level or on your asset level. Um, at this stage, I haven't yet linked any monitoring points to my parameters. And once you've rolled out these changes from your asset type, you can then link your specific monitoring points that you created for temperature or vibration. You can now link to your um, parameters. Okay, so here's the um, two monitoring points that I created. So just to show you examples, this monitoring point is for the temperature on the alternator belt, uh, where I use a uh, thermography technology to capture the surface temperature. And then um, I've already captured a few readings in here just to show um, how this is captured. And it's, it's quite easy to capture this. So you can just say add over here and the the temperature in this case is, I don't know, 55 uh, degrees C. And it's quite easy to capture that reading. But um, 
Uh, I have to also be clear over here is this, I can capture this uh, manually like this, but for this example, it's a reading that has to be captured from a work order on a monthly basis. And this work order is created with your proposed work orders that you run. Okay, and then the other monitoring point is my vibration monitoring points. And yeah, the readings that I've captured here, for example, um, you know, this the 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 parameter that I set over here or the threshold that I set over here is five millimeters per second. So if it uh, exceeds five millimeters per second, um, the expression that's linked to the uh, to the generator will then evaluate as true and then automatically raise an alarm. Okay, so here's the alarm. I've collected the data, I've captured the readings and on key either manually or automatically. I created expressions to say when must we create um, alarms. And now I captured a reading that exceeded these thresholds or evaluated those expressions as true. And here you can see the alarm that was created. So um, you can look at the alarm type that is linked to it. You can save any attributes uh, to the specific um, alarm. And then what is the expression that is linked and that actually caused this alarm to be created? And you can open this up if you want. You can go see you know, what is the expression that's linked to it. And also what is the task that's linked uh, to this alarm? So in other words, this alarm was created, but the task linked to this alarm is that you have to now go report these deviations. Okay, I've created an alarm, and like I said, the alarm types, I can now specify what is the action when this alarm gets created. And you can have many of these um, actions, action options. And for this one, I've said that it's a long time for automatically creating work orders from alarms triggered by expressions. Um, and the nice thing about this is you can already say what the default work order status should be, what the default type of work, as well as what's the section, uh, or the responsible section um, for this work order. Okay, and then finally, what you want is the work order. So I've set up an automatic um, measurement or a monitoring for my vibration analysis. So what happened is I've exceeded the five millimeters per second um, threshold. And this work order was automatically um, created. I've got all of the details in terms of the asset um, or the asset type. I've got the work, you know, so you can uh, put in your work feedback once the uh, work was performed. Uh, you can put in a work request, your planning, like I said, the type of the default type of work, etc. Feedback, once the work is done, you can set up a, a very custom classifications uh, to this work order. But the, um, yeah, I think the, the core functionality over here for condition-based maintenance is that is what is the task that was added, automatically added to this work order based on the measurement that were, came in and uh, triggered an alarm. And just to show you over here, the talk over here, uh, the task over here is uh, that you should report deviations and actions for repair or replacement. This is the detail that the artisan or the technician will receive. And now he or she doesn't need to wonder about what to do if this alarm was created. L like I said previously, um, you know, if you've got a condition monitoring system and you just receive lots of alarms, but you don't know what to do if these alarms are created, uh, Onki takes that worry away and it tells you and you, you know, beforehand predefine what needs to happen. Um, and the nice thing about this is you can also specify, you know, who's responsible to uh, report these deviations. If I can open this up, in this case, I said that, um, you know, what is the section? Uh, section? So yeah, I just said this, the Pragma condition monitoring team. Um, it's a specific engineer, uh, the trade, oh, well, sorry, the trade here is the engineering. And then I can also address a specific person over here. Okay, and then once they finish the work, uh, the durations of this work will also automatically be populated. You can add notes to it as well. 
Okay, so yeah, this is this, uh, these are the steps and the process of how I collected this data or how I set up my maintenance plan on asset type level. I've created an instance of that asset type or that template. I created a monitoring point trigger or container that includes all of my expressions that needs to trigger alarms. I've created monitoring points to link those, um, those parameters to these uh, monitoring points. The uh, alarms were created, you know, as an example. And then this is an um, example of an alarm type. So what is the action that needs to be performed? And um, yeah, I don't show it over here, but you can also set up notifications for when alarms are raised or even when there's a change in your work order status. And this includes email notifications, SMS notifications, etc. Okay, um, and then you've got your work order that was created um, automatically. Okay, so yeah, let's let's go back to the um, FMI example. So like I said, I first want to just quickly show you the, the process, but if I can jump into the um, FMI, so if I open up the component, because the FMI is performed on component level, so you can have a couple of um, yeah, FMEOs that you created for those components, but I created this one. So let me just first collapse all of these. So, so the header, first of all, you know, what's the detail of this um, FMEO that's, that I created? And what is the function of this um, component? So here it provides drive to the battery charging alternator. The failure mode that I identified, um, you know, is failure to transmit drive to the alternator. The failure mechanism, um, you know, this is a belt is worn or stretched or failed. And then the cause, what's the cause? So in this case, you know, um, excessive heat usage, insufficient tension, high vibration and, and noise. And then you also have to now be very specific in terms of what the task is that's linked to your um, FMR. And in this case, it's perform IR thermography um, survey. Okay, um, yeah, and I think, you know, uh, the, the last thing that I want to show is how do you, you've now created all of your expressions uh, on asset type level, and then how do you link your specific monitoring points? So if you go to your asset tree and you open up your generator or your asset, yeah, you can see the monitoring point trigger that's um, connected to it. So in this case, I created this monitoring point trigger. But what I want to do now is I want to link my actual monitoring points to the parameters that I specified. So here it tells me you have to link your monitoring point temperature parameter and your monitoring point vibration parameter. So if I can just open up this temperature one, you can see that you know it's the monitoring point temperature parameter, but link a specific monitoring point to it. And this is what it is. And the nice thing is I've already on asset type level said what the monitoring point type is. So if you um, open up this lookup table, it will only show you the applicable temperature monitoring points that you can add to it. And in this case, for this uh, generator, this is the one that's, that I added. Okay, and um, yeah, I think that's it. What I wanted to show you in terms of, you know, so so what we're trying to demonstrate here is capture the data. Um, you've got your maintenance plan already predefined, uh, and then you can automatically drive your maintenance and put the power of um, on key in someone's hand as well to perform the work, and he knows exactly, uh, yeah, knows exactly what to do. Okay, and so that is um, it um, from the demo. So um, let's move back to the presentation. And yeah, that's all that I wanted to add today. There's a lot more that I can show you, uh, but we only have limited time. So yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity and we can take uh, questions now. Aaron, uh, yeah, thanks a lot for the presentation. Um, I think they were already a couple of questions that, uh, that Gerard raised. I was just busy typing some answers to them, but perhaps we can uh, just verbally speak about them. 
Uh, the, the first the first question um, was uh, related to um, how complex these expressions that, that you refer to have been made. And, and the answer, the short answer is you can make those expressions um, as complex as you'd like to. It can reference multiple monitoring point readings. It can reference other data in OnKey. It can have static values in it. You can have, apply math functions to it. You could mm. even let the expression use the outputs of another expression. And that kind of gets me to Carol's question about um, whether you would be able to detect a, a, a rate of change in some value. And um, mm -hmm. I think for that, you would be able to achieve that if you have uh, a current and a, and a maybe a five minute ago reading and you reference the two. Yeah. So that when I get the current value, I look at what was the previous value, subtract it, and then based on that trigger. So, so that mm -hmm. I think should be possible. It, it will be um, it will be one of your more complex expressions to set up, but but certainly um, I think one won't be able to do that. Um, yeah. and I'd also like to add what I what I didn't touch uh, on over here is you can also have calculated monitoring points. So um, it's not just the expressions, but you can create an additional monitoring points. Um, where you can, I don't know, let's say, for example, you want to calculate power from two monitoring points, um, voltage and current, and you can take those two monitoring points, multiply them, um, and then you can have a power as a calculated monitoring point. Exactly. And, and, and yeah. if, you, if you were to reference a historic monitoring point, then you could essentially get the delta between the two and mm. then get the rate of change, you know, so yeah. something that should be yeah. possible. So We've also uh, created a complex, um, you know, monitoring point calculations to look at um, relative saturation for transformer um, oil. So it uses um, exponential uh, functions as well as logarithmic uh, functions to perform that calculation. Yeah, excellent. And and I think then um, the, the second question from Gerard was uh, just in terms of we, we spoke a lot about Onki Plus, the, our new product here. For those clients that are still using Onki 5, um, to what extent this functionality is available in Onki 5? And um, uh, condition monitoring is certainly, condition based maintenance certainly supported by Onki 5. I think the main limitations you've got there is you don't have this expression capability. So, there the, you would have one condition monitoring value entering the system compared against a certain threshold. If the threshold is, is breached, uh, alarm is raised, and an automatic work order is created. The other important part or limitation in Onki 5 is that automatic work order that's created will just have a default task on it. So it will it will basically just tell an artisan or a technician that uh, this, this value tripped and you need to go and repair or, or, or take some action. I think very important point that Darren uh, nicely demonstrated here is with Onki Plus, you can already completely plan the detail of that task that needs to be performed in terms of spares, uh, the right labor needed, etc. And that's really what allows you to fully automate uh, from a sensor reading up to the point where uh, the right technician is dispatched uh, with the right task in hand already without any planner activity needed in, in place. So that 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 last part of the detailed task planning is not uh, is not supported in Onki 5 when you want to do it in an automated way. So I think that's that's Gerard's second question. Uh, then the third question was just, uh, and I think that's another good one that we um, uh, also maybe wanted to highlight is when we look at these condition monitoring tactics, um, one often gets stuck on the more advanced, or you immediately jump to the more advanced condition monitoring solutions and tactics that you and, and techniques that you can apply. But this is very much something that you can apply to data that you know most industrial equipment already collects through the PLCs or that's available in your SCADA system um, in terms of pressures and flow rates and uh, motor currents, various other things like that, which you could feed into Onkey then um, and uh, let that trigger maintenance maintenance work. So Onkey, I think Darren did mention it. It's got an extensive uh, API application interface through which you can insert um, this data either either through the IoT route as, as dem Darren demonstrated here, but you could also use other technologies um, to um, to pick up the data from where it's uh, originating and and insert it into Onkey. 
Mm, yeah, so the couple of options, and I see what Gerrit um, said over there, using a, a Siemens PLC. Mm. Um, you know, you've got a couple of options to collect the data. You can either collect it directly from the PLC itself um, using a um, you know standard protocol, uh, but it's safer to rather um, do it from your OPC server or your historian where this data is collected in your PLC system. And um, we've already done integrations where you set up um, interfaces to push that data and make it available in OnCube. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that that is working quite nicely at, at, at a couple of our clients. Um, and, and then I see there's a comment from, from Jose. Um, I think a good comment. And, you know, in retrospect, we, we could have done more around that in just uh, in terms of uh, visualizing the condition monitoring data that's flowing into the system. Um, we we have that through our insights models, um, you know, where you can see condition monitoring data, you know, just in a more visual way for somebody to make sense of. Um, so we just didn't didn't show too much of that. It's obviously available through reporting as well. Um, and yeah, so 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 that 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 is that is there, and it, it, it is actually um, something that one 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 can can visualize and show to show to clients. Just want to check. Um, is there any other questions maybe that anybody would like to ask? Uh, thank you, Stefan. I just have some questions that I want to filter in as well. Um, so one of the questions that came up is, I have an existing PLC system in place. Can I use this data for condition monitoring purposes in OnKey? Yes, yeah, thanks, Jolene. Uh, Darren, I don't know if you want to take that mm. one. It's closely related to what I was just speaking yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. So it's already what we mentioned now. And um, I'd like to also add to Gerard's um, comment. So, so he's asking that, you know, can you import condition monitoring data? So yes, yeah, you can import it. Uh, but, you know, Anki is not a system that pulls data from any other system. You still have to, you know, have a integration solution in place to collect the data from your um, OPC or your historian database and then push it uh, to Anki using uh, the APIs um, in Anki. Um, but then you could also have multiple options available on your PLC system, you know, being in Wonder, Wonderware or um, you know, OSI Soft, whatever you know, brand you're using for your PLC. And those technologies um, often also have interface options available uh, to allow you to do this integration as well. Great. Thank you, Darren. And then just um, are all technicians notified that they have received work orders that or that an alarm has been triggered? Maybe I'll take that one, Darren. Yeah, and I see, uh, as I also asked about that, um, so Onki Plus has quite a um, advanced uh, notification mechanism built in for that matter, Onki 5 as well, uh, that you could in the, much the same way as you triggered on um, conditions and you know then generated an alarm and a, and a work order, you would be able to set the system up such that it uh, generates a notification that goes out to a person um, at this stage via, via email. We will expand on that in future to support other platforms and technologies as well that the notification can be raised. But yeah, so that the person is notified then of um, the work order that was issued to them so that they know to go and either look in the system uh, in Anki user interface itself to complete that work order, or um, if they are a field engineer app user that accompanies Anki Plus, that work order will also end up in the field engineer app where um, it could have already been assigned to them and I just need to uh, go and complete the work then. Yeah, um, and uh, I see uh, Jose also mentioned uh, WhatsApp. So we have already looked at uh, WhatsApp as a notification feature, uh, you know, outside of the Anki, um, you know, system. And what we found with Anki, just for interest, uh, sorry, uh, with, with WhatsApp, just for interest sake, is that uh, WhatsApp doesn't allow you to send data programmatically to WhatsApp groups. Um, and we had to look at other options such as uh, Telegram, uh, which actually allows you to send, uh, programmatically send chats to um, channels. That's, that's just an interesting yeah, thing. Point, yeah. I think that's in use in the asset health monitoring um, 
Yeah, yeah, we, we, we're using that, but, um, you know, we, we're sending email notifications from Anki to an integration solution, and then the integration solution will then push the data to uh, Telegram. Um, but the nice thing is you can pull all of the information that you need. Um, we've also added, you know, interactive capability in, in Telegram, where you can click a link to acknowledge a work order that was raised. And if that work order... Um, hasn't been acknowledged in a specific duration of time, it, it then gets escalated to management. Great, thank you, Darren. And then just finally, um, for companies that want to um, embark on, on condition-based maintenance tactics, what are the key considerations that they should take into account? Darren, shall I take that one and you fill in? Yeah, sure. I, I think, um, yeah, a good question, uh, Jolene. As I said earlier, I think, you know, one can often jump immediately into very advanced uh, condition monitoring techniques and solutions without really having a good solid underbuild of why am I measuring this and what am I hoping to detect through this measurement? So, you know, if, if you have the um capability otherwise get it in you know have a good understanding of the of the criticality of the equipment that you want to to um to maintain in your in your environment first you know that's always where all maintenance should start um, and then you know for your critical equipment go and understand uh how do they fail you know what is the failure modes mechanisms causes as Darren illustrated and then based on that go and evaluate which condition monitoring technologies can be used to, to monitor those. What are the costs of those? Uh, how does it weigh up against uh, other alternatives? And only then start looking at, um, you know, how do I actually integrate it into the into the solution as Darren just showed now. I think um, too often, uh, you know, people get drawn into or caught by, you know, fancy new technology for measuring, but not really thinking through exactly, will it, for instance, give me enough uh, of a warning so that I can in time respond to it before I actually have a functional failure. So really start with your tactics development process um, and feed that through, you know, to the point where you select technologies, et cetera. I think the only um, alternative to that that I would say is if you already are in place with a lot of maintenance tactics and you just want to review that, one thing that you can and should just consider as part of this is, as uh, you know, Gerard also asked, um, is there not already some condition that I'm measuring through the control system of my solution? I think Darren showed the, the generator controller as well. Um, that sensor itself already gives you, for instance, a battery level or, you know, the fuel level could also be a condition that you monitor. So there's a couple of those things that one can just take into consideration. And then, you know, condition monitoring might actually be much closer within reach than one thinks. You know, it's not this advanced thing that you can only do um, once you've crossed many hurdles. Uh, it can often be applied quite quite quickly already if you just um, can quickly look at how does my equipment fail? What is the equipment telling me about how it's failing and then selecting the right tactic? Mm -hmm. Maybe while I've got the work, um, Jolene, I just want to add something else here. I, I, I think uh, Paul Roos asked the question that I quickly just want to touch yes. on as well. Thank um, you, Stefan. Yes, uh, um, yeah, I think these days, you know, looking at, at, at uh, maintenance tactics, more and more you see a distinction being made between what's called predictive maintenance and what we call uh, condition-based maintenance here. I think in our world, in our view, condition-based maintenance is a predictive technology uh, and, and an approach. You are using your PF curve, which uh, early on in that curve that Darren showed, already uh, you know through the right technology you can start detecting uh, emerging failure the equipment hasn't failed yet you're detecting something that tells you that there's going to be a failure in future and based on that you you um you know then take the right actions so condition-based maintenance in that sense in my mind definitely includes that but then we, we need to recognize as well there are the more advanced condition-based uh, tactics uh, that uses machine learning and artificial intelligence and various other techniques to, based on a lot of data that I collect, uh, predict without so much uh, manual thinking uh, on behalf of the reliability engineer or whoever put the tactic in place, 
predicts when the equipment's going to fail. So calculate the remaining useful life as an example. Uh, and then what, you know, how, how Onkey would integrate with that is then actually, instead of taking a physical measurement into the condition monitoring uh, reading, you take uh, the remaining useful life measurement in, so it might be 30 days or 10 days or whatever it is, and then you trigger based on that. So your advanced algorithm outside of Onkey uh, calculates that uh, expected time of failure, feed it into Onkey, and that triggers the, um, the tactic. I think by these by this time, the advances in uh, in artificial intelligence and machine learning in, in those specialized platforms have, have advanced to a point where I'd be cautious and reluctant to actually build it into, into the system. We would rather, uh, you know, as part, and we're really busy with projects like that, where we use, um, as an example, um, Azure's machine learning platform to do that AI for us and that analog value is then just fed into Onkey to figure that, to figure the work, if that answers the question.